the New York Rangers into the cover, hooks the leg, the streak is over. 17 straight wins for the Tampa Bay Lightning in situations where they have lost the previous game. They have always, always found a way to come back. But not tonight. The New York Rangers played a tremendous game against the Tampa Bay Lightning here, and with all the odds stacked against them, like, I know, heading into this game, there was, oh, the streak. They haven't lost back-to-back -back playoff games since the 2019 sweep against the Columbus Blue Jackets, where they were the best team in the league by a mile. And then they lost to Duchesne, Panarin, and all them on Columbus. We all know that was the case, right? We all know that when the Lightning score first in a game, they usually run away with it by either shutting the game down or just piling on and piling on and piling on more goals. When they scored the first goal here today, Nikita Kucherov, man advantage, just whipped it on goal and it went by everybody. I was like, okay, um, yeah, so the series is going to be 1-1, right? 1-1, it will be a New York loss on home ice for the first time in seven games or whatever it was. Like, they had their own streak too on Madison Square Garden, but still... I was kind of interested in seeing where the rest of the game would follow, and boy oh boy, did we see ourselves a game. Because immediately after, okay, maybe not immediately after, what was it, like three minutes after? We had ourselves a rebound for the New York Rangers. It's Keandre Miller who has the puck in the offensive zone. He whips it towards the goal. It gets blocked. It comes right back over to him. He shoots. He scores. It gets right by Vasilevsky. This one assisted by Vitrano and Chris Kreider. It is 1-1. Five minutes into the first period. You had Igor making a few more saves. The Rangers were getting some shots as well. Stamkos and Kalorn get their opportunities. But before the end of the first period, with two to go, it's Adam Fox who absolutely debates the Tampa Bay defender deep on the faceoff circle in the Tampa zone. He kind of fades away into a shot attempt, it looks like, but then he stops on a dime, pivots around the guy, sends it back door out in front. There's a clear lane for Capo Caco, who's right there, and he tips it in perfectly. 2-1, New York, in the first period's intermission. And we're all thinking it. We're all saying in the back of our heads, hey, the Tampa Bay Lightning are losing right now. It's tough for Vasilevsky to make a save on a rebound that comes right after the initial shot attempt, and it's tough for him to stop a backdoor play when there's no interference on the passing lane from Adam Fox to Capo Caco. But still, the Rangers have been doing a pretty good job. You give it the second period, and you see a lot more New York possession here, and a lot more New York chances. This was really just Tampa Bay not matching the pace that the Rangers were playing at, and the zone time, the offensive opportunities here, especially at the halfway mark by the Rangers. Philip Cheadle had that backhand opportunity that went wide. It was incredible just seeing what the Rangers were doing, and you could really feel it. This was their game. Sure, they're only up by one, but this was a game that at the halfway mark of the second, you're like, yeah, okay, New York is by far the better team. They have maybe caught a Tampa Bay Lightning squad that has been a little bit too jet-lagged, or maybe not jet-lagged, rusty is the word I'm looking for because they hadn't played in so long after sweeping the Florida Panthers. Maybe that's what happened, but you still got to give Tampa the benefit of the doubt because, hey, it's Tampa Bay. New York then gets an early goal at the start of the third period. It is Mika Zibanejad, a snapshot assisted by Fox and Chris Kreider. The Lightning then responded with their own opportunities, but Igor Shashurkin, equal to the task, he earns himself the right for the Rangers fanbase in MSG to start chanting once again that Igor is better than Andre Vasilevsky, who did let in three goals in this one. Igor eventually lets in another one. It's Nick Paul on the six on five who absolutely waltzes right in front and dangles the pants off Igor. The Lightning then got a few opportunities towards the end where I just kind of gritted my teeth and I was like, oh boy, that could have gone in if it was like any other day that might have actually gone into the net. There were slap shots from the point that were getting tipped, rebounds in front. The Lightning just did everything right, but they did not score. 3-2 is the final verdict here 
in MSG in game two. It's kind of funny because the Lightning scored three minutes into the game and then they scored with two minutes left in the game as well. So goals at the very beginning and at the very end for Tampa. Meanwhile, New York gets their goals spread throughout. It is a New York win and they've got two games up on the reigning two-time defending back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions. The streak is over, and that is what I think everybody's going to be focusing on here. Tampa hasn't lost back-to-back -back games since they lost four straight games in the Columbus series in 2019. So when it comes down to it, I mean, this is kind of uncharted territory, is it not? We haven't been here in a while. Last time we were here, the Lightning got swept, which I don't really think is possible for this version of the Tampa Bay Lightning, but the Rangers have just improved so much since their start against the Pittsburgh Penguins all throughout the lineup that... I don't know, man. Where do you go from here? That's not a question that I think I have the answer to right now. This New York team, from goaltending, Igor, the defending, the rest of the team in front of Igor, and the forward core, the goal production, the offensive consistency, the mojo, the swagger, the passing, the playmaking. This team, from, let's say, games 2, 3, and 4 against Pittsburgh versus now... They got hot at the right time. The absolute right time to get hot is in the Stanley Cup playoffs because we've seen this before, right? Teams that aren't necessarily the best, quote-unquote, getting a hot run from a goalie or from a line or from a defense pairing, and they absolutely overwhelm everybody else in the postseason because if you get hot during April, it means you're likely in for a good time. We're seeing great things out of the kid line. We're seeing great things out of Fox and Keandre Miller. And Igor Shashurkin is back up here and better than ever. That is not to discredit the Tampa Bay Lightning. They are a fantastic team as well. It's just a good chunk of their chances came in this game at the beginning and the end. Like, we had the goal from Kucherov, the goal from Paul, but it wasn't really until it was 6-on-5 that I think the Tampa Bay Lightning really started to clamp it down. There was a good period of the third that was not really filled with Tampa Bay opportunities. It was just New York kind of killing the time, and they did that. So now it's 2 nothing heading over to Tampa Bay. I will say the Tampa Bay Lightning, as we have learned in the Toronto series, they are vulnerable at home. The Rangers have won eight straight at home, so good for them, but they're no longer at home. Even if this series gets tied up 2-2, Going back to MSG would still be a pretty good boost for the Rangers and their morale, but still, there's no reason for this team to doubt themselves after what they've accomplished in the first two games. I don't know what it is about Tampa, man, but this is not the same team that beat the Florida Panthers. Who knows? I mean, okay, maybe I'm biting myself in the behind by saying that because I'm so very obviously talking in this video from the perspective of somebody that was cheering for the Rangers to win because I want an underdog story to prevail, but... Either way, talk to the comments about your thoughts about the Rangers and the Lightning game number two. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.